Hi, this is Angela Cox, and I am going to show you how to cut out a dinosaur pattern. The first thing that you need to do is gather the materials that you need. You will need one dinosaur pattern. You will need some pins. You will need some fabrics, nice fleece fabric, nice and soft. You will need some paper scissors, and then you will also need some fabric scissors, right? Miss Cox sent with you some fabric scissors to use to cut your fabric. If you use your fabric scissors to cut paper, they will get really dull, and you won't be able to use them to cut your fabric. They won't work. So step number one, I need to cut out my dinosaur pattern on the solid black line. Okay, so I'm just going to go around with my paper scissors and cut out on the solid black line. You don't need really, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, no stress. Put a little bit under over the line. That's fine. But I got to first cut out this pattern. Cut this out. It doesn't take very long at all. Go around. Cut it out. Now, do you see here at the end where I have where it kind of cut off at the end? I'm just going to keep going, let it go out. Right? And I'm going to start here. Kind of a, the top here kind of cut off the tail a little bit, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. And so I have cut out my pattern. Almost done. Just cut this out. Now, once I cut out my pattern, I am ready to lay it out on my fabric. Okay, so throw away this paper, or even better, recycle it, and I'm going to take my fabric. So here's my fabric, got some little bits of buzzes on it. You should have two pieces or one big piece folded. Mine happens to be one big piece folded. Now, the people who design patterns are very lazy. They don't want to have to cut out two dinosaurs if they can cut out two at once. So I'm going to take two of my fabric layers, right? If I have one big piece like this, then I'm going to fold it in half. And I am going to take my dinosaur, and I am going to put him on the fabric so that he fits, right? And then I need to pin this down so that it doesn't move. Right, so I have some straight pins right here, and I'm going to take these pins, and I am going to, it's like this one, boom, and I am going to take it, and I'm going to pin it. I do not want the pattern to move while I'm trying to cut it out. So to pin it, I'm going to start up here on the head, right, and I'm going to poke my pin all the way through, right? I'm going to poke it all the way through so that I can see the pin coming out on the back side. And then I'm going to push that pin up so that it, I can see the sharp end on the front side. Just like that. Right? So, one at a time. Okay. I got my head is secure. Now I'm going to go over here. Let's do the back next. Take my fabric pin. I'm going to take my straight pins. These are called straight pins. And I'm going to poke it all the way through until I can see the meat of the pin on the back right here. And then I'm going to push it. I'm going to move these other pins out of the way. They keep falling. Right? I'm going to push it up so that I can see the sharp edge of the pin on the front. I should always be able to see the sharp edge of the pin, right? And I never want to make it so 
that my sharp edge is pointing this way. Because if I do, then I might poke myself on the pin. Right? They should always be pointing towards the middle. Like that. Poke it all the way down until I can see it on the back side. And then push it up. Just like that. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the legs. Because when I'm cutting around them, I, I don't want them to move. So I'm going to poke up. Just like that. And then I'm going to pop it so I can see it on the flip side. Right? When you're pinning, you always want the little ball edge of the pin, the blunt end, to be towards where your hand is going to be. Right? The sharp part should point towards the middle. I also want to make sure that I don't have any that are poking out. Like, I don't want to do it like this. Because I'm going to cut around this edge. Oh, wait, can you see that? See how that's poking out like that? That's the wrong way to do it. Because if I if I try to cut, then I'm going to run into my pin. Right? And I have to adjust my cut a little bit. Because when I pin it, sometimes when you pin it, it moves. And you want to make sure that this whole entire thing is on here. So I'm going to pin this one first. Because this is the part that seems to be moving here. So all the way down so I can see that sharp edge come through. And then poke it forward just like that. Look, do you see how I bent my pen? Like I pushed on it and it bent. I don't want to use that one anymore. I should have given you some extra pins. If you need more pins or anything, all you have to do is ask. I need lots of pins. Sometimes you get some dull ones. I don't know why that's so hard. Here, let me try all the way down. Poke it through. And push it up. There it goes. Right? So I want to make sure. I pin it on the legs because the legs like to move. You don't want to move. The whole goal of pinning this is we do not want it to move when we're trying to cut it out. And then poke it down. Poke straight through just like that. Okay. Poke it down. Poke straight through. See how I rip my fabric a little bit? That's fine. Now, some people, sometimes students are like, well, how many pins do I need to put in it? The number of pins doesn't matter, but what does matter is you want it so that when you cut it, it's not going to move. I think here, one, two, three, four, five pins is probably enough. I don't think it's going to move. Now, I'm ready to cut. Now, before you cut, you should have an adult check that makes sure that you have it pinned right. Because anything you do to this sewing project, if you sew it wrong, we can take those stitches out and fix it. The only thing that we can't fix is an incorrect cut, right? If you cut it wrong, and then there's a good chance that you'll need more fabric, right? So you want to make sure that it's pinned on through both layers. When I wiggle this around, it's not going to move. So now, I am ready to cut. So when I cut, I'm going to cut about half to a quarter inch outside of the, fat, of the pattern. Right? I'm not going to cut right up against this pattern. I'm going to cut just right on the outside of it. Right? Kind of like this. Hold on, I'm going to need some different scissors, I think. That just work. I give you guys all the brand new ones, and I have the older ones. The fact that these aren't cutting very well means that somebody is probably using them for paper. People like to use fabric scissors for paper because they cut really well, but if you use fabric scissors for paper, guess what? Then they won't cut fabric very well. Right? See how I'm cutting right along the outside of this fabric? Hold on, let's get some scissors.
scissors that I gave you. Right? Look how much better they cut. See that? They cut oh, so much better. Right? I'm just going to take it and cut all around the outside. Not right up next to it, but along the outside. Get rid of this. Turn my little dino around. Right? And cut him out. And I really want to make sure that I leave enough room for the neck right here. Because the neck is a point of difficulty. I'll show you what I mean later. Right. Cut this guy out. All the way around. Just kind of on the edges. And don't worry, I can trim it up later. It's not perfect. Right here, this is kind of hard, so I'm going to take it. Cut all the way around here. Just like this. There I have my dino, right? So at this point, I want to take out my pins and make sure that I have two little dinos, right? That should match pretty much perfectly. So I'm going to take my pins out. Now don't leave these pins laying around because they can poke people. So I'm going to make sure I put them back in my little pin thing. You put them back in your baggie, right? And if they're bent, if you bent one, then throw that one away, right? And once they're bent, they're just a hazard, okay? Now, this fabric that I have is extra, right? You can do whatever you want with it. You can, in my classroom, I normally cut it up and use it for fabric samples so we can practice, right? So here is my dyno, and I'm, and I'm just going to look around and make sure he looks good, right? I'm also going to flip him over and make sure, oh, do you see here how my tail is a little bit messed up? I think I might trim that a little bit just to match. I want my tail to look cute. So I'm going to trim him just a little bit so that he's better. And I'm all done. I have my batter. I have two little dinosaur tails, right? I have two dinos. This is exactly what I should have at the end 